body is made up of water. So as we pour the water, we declare that let peace be its portion. Ebachumu eko. Don't be banyan chwe chwe. Me eshinya ke bi. Ke nyanyo me. Mo solya ke no fya no baye emu ina me. Fara, into your hands we commend your dearly beloved servant. You've been faithful to captain. But now, even as he departs, no more to be with us. We pour this water and we declare, as the water is spilled on the ground and cannot be retrieved, so has he also gone and cannot come back. But we declare that let the peace of the Lord be upon the family to keep and to preserve them that evil shall not be their portion. We declare, let also the door of death be shut. None of his seed shall die for their time. In the name of Jesus, we commend everything that has to do with today into your hands, that you will begin with us, take us through, and end with us, that at the end, the glory shall be yours. We thank you for friends and family, those who are coming from far and near. As we stand on these grounds, we declare they will also be safe no accident, no evil, no delays. Everything shall be in order. And finally, we pray. Let the angel of the Lord guard and protect the living as they go through the rest of their lives. Guide them. Take them through the path and let the path be clear for them. We thank you for your son Jesus, who you brought to us to die for us, to ensure that our lives is never the same again. Let his death my God, be of benefit to each and every one of us that will discover ourselves and the reason why you gave us the planet Earth. Thank you one more time for Samuel. May I pray back into your hands to come in here. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
you are seeing them and you go around a little bit and come back to the same place. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay, thank you.
John 14, 1 to 7, the way, the truth, and the life. Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that was not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and I've seen him. Thank you so much, Brenda, for the reading of God's word. I would like to now invite Leslie Papo, family member, to come to the platform and to bring the eulogy. Thank you. Sammy Papo, age 67. 
Samini Akwe Jomu Papo, a loving, devoted father, husband, grandfather, and brother. To others known as Jomu, was born on 27th of November, 1953, and called to eternity on 4th October, 2023. Sami was born in Accra. He was the second son of Emmanuel and the late Mrs. Comfort Papo and the fifth out of nine siblings who, who all lived in the family house in Manprabi. He started his primary education at Methodist Manprabi and continued at Hanson Road Methodist, moving to secondary education at Christian Methodist. Sami left Accra to the United Kingdom in 1978. Soon after, he was employed at the Fuller's Turner and Smith Brewery in Hammersmith, where he worked for almost 20 years, enjoying copious amounts of beer. During this time, he met his sweetheart, Gertrude Hesse, in the heart of South London, at her mother's house, to be precise. They later moved to West London, where they married, and she became Mrs. Gertrude Papa. They were blessed with two children, Michael and Roxanne Papa. Sammy remained in West London, where he made many friends who became family. Eventually, he and Gertie relocated back to Dasoma, Ghana, to enjoy the fruits of their labor, living out the dream he had set himself when he first left Accra as a young man. Sami has always been a loving person and with open arms to every, everyone. He was the life of the party, a great host, ensuring everyone is looked after and a good sport participating in any occasion. Sami is survived by his two children and three grandchildren and was loved by many and very well respected. It is a sad time for us all, as I know he had a place in many hearts. Sami may be gone, but he is not forgotten. Ni Akwe Jomo, rest in eternal peace. You will be forever missed. As your last words to small were, to be continued. be continued indeed, we'll hear a little more about that journey later on. Let us please stand, we're going to sing our second hymn, Blessed Assurance.
praising my Saviour all the day long. As I learned more about Papa Sammy, I realised that his life was perfectly submitted to the Lord. The things that have been said about him. He praised his Saviour, whether knowingly or unknowingly, all the day long as he lived his life. I would like to invite for our second reading from Psalm 91, Mrs. Margaret Hess, please. Thank you. Come this way. Good morning. The second reading is taken from Psalm 91, verses 1 to 16. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foulest snare and the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the sorrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the black that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe your, with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guide you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample and the great lion and the serpents. Serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, and I will rescue him, I, and I will protect him. For he acknowledges my name. He, he will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, I'd like to invite as part of our remembrance section here, family members will now share their own tributes. So I'd like to ask daughter-in-law Annette Mazini Papo to please come forward and bring the tribute on behalf of Mrs. Gertrude Papo. Sammy, my husband, Sammy, my friend, Sammy, my handbag, my soulmate, my everything. How do I live without you? It's only God, our children and grandchildren I have left of you. The past 40 years you made the best. For better, for worse, or ups and downs, me calling your name 20 times a day. Who will I call now? You stood by me and I stood by you. You were loving, selfless, and so generous to everyone. There's nothing you wouldn't do. I'm so grateful for everything you have done for me. Meeting you was truly my fairy tale. Even in your last days, you kept saying, I was your main worry, but wouldn't finish your sentence. Oh, Sammy, you knew you were going to leave me. What will I do without you? My heart is no more whole. 
Honestly, I'm lost without you. I'm sad you left me so soon, but God knows best. Sammy, I love you, have always loved you, and always will. My darling husband, my Romeo. Thank you so much, Annette. We now have the next tribute, which is going to be read by Peggy Mom. And this tribute is from daughter Roxanne Papa. Some really beautiful words there that give some of us insight into who Papa Sammy was. I'd like to invite his son, Michael, to now come and bring his tribute. Thank you. Where do I start, Dad or Pops, as I have you saved in my phone? To me, you are the man with a few words, but plenty of action. And as the saying goes, actions speak louder, actions speak louder than words. I have so many fond memories of our time together. The earliest I can recall was my second birthday in Ghana. Me in the middle with the big number two blue cake, the big blue number two cake, surrounded by all my cousins, and in the custom and with the customary bottles of booze red on the table. Then there was also my pet monkey, Kairo, who was always by my side. I remember me and Rox being in a pub garden with you and your friends at least once a week. I remember our frequent trips to Calais, travelling across the channel for one pound, in search for bargain boots, stockpiling on Stella like the world was about to end. I remember every summer holiday finding myself in Ghana wondering why are we always here, to a point they had me thinking the world must only be London and Ghana. Now I appreciate those trips and the familiarity with Ghana has afforded me and my family. Pups, I remember you as a man of integrity, generous and hardworking.
what I saw was a man who loved his family and wife and would do whatever was needed to provide. Your infamous I made Michael speech at our wedding, for me, was an entertaining insight into our relationship and will be remembered forever. You are truly an inspiration and you have instilled solid values that have shaped the man I've become. Since you've passed, I've been vicariously living your life through many stories told by your friends. A testament to the man, to the life you lived and the legacy you leave. It's not what you leave for someone, it's what you leave in someone. Thank you for everything. Love you, Dad. Some really beautiful words and uh, lovely memories. I made my call. What a wonderful memory to live with for a man who helped to shape his son. We give God praise for his life. Let us stand together. We're going to sing our next hymn, Peace, Perfect Peace. Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 to 18. 
Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about, our, about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, we are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left with will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Daphne. I'd like to now invite to read the tribute from the nieces and nephew, Connie Papo and Stephanie Williams. Thank you. family leader and a source of joy to all. But as the Bible says, it is appointed unto man who wants to die. Death is an appointment. Each and every one will keep at some time, at some time in the not too distant future. And we have very little control over the timing. Uncle Sammy, as we affectionately called him, was an uncle like no other with a very caring, fatherly instinct that endeared all of us to him. He was the uncle with the indomitable spirit, a mover and a shaker, always making things happen when he was around. Uncle Sammy had a very kind disposition and could adapt his personality to make you feel he was one of us despite the age gap. One cannot eulogize Uncle Sammy without referencing the spectacular parties he had held over the decades. He was an entertainment guru and had the ability to organize and mobilize his friends and family for a blast. Uncle Sammy was a people's person. He did not have one bad bone in him. He was very easy to get along with and had many facets to his character that made him special. His sense of humor was infectious, and even when serious issues needed to be addressed, he made his point without upsetting anyone. The army of friends that he had are a testimony to his caring deeply for others. He touched countless lives with his benevolence, and his fondness knew no bounds. Even our school friends on meeting him were wild with adoration. His sudden death has left a huge void in the family and numbed our spirits. Typically, he remained upbeat to the end, reminiscing over eating very thick tilapia as he would do with his fingers, with kinky and drinking star beer. Those were his very words that belied a man always looked on the bright side of things. Uncle Sammy, you'll be sorely missed, but your lasting memory will live with us always until we meet again. Fare thee well, our uncle, father, and friend. Yes, from my mother and me. A loving memory of a very special brother and uncle. It's been hard without you, but in many ways it feels as though you've never left. We carry you wherever we go. We hear you in our laughs, feel you in our tears. In our hearts you will always be. You left too big of an imprint to not feel your presence. 
I needed you here, but I know God needed you more. We will still miss you and your love and your loud words after your bit. We'll always miss you more than words can say. See you again, Lord. We love you. You always be. Fly high and rest well, always and forever. Thank you both for those beautiful words, deep memories, some fond and fun things as well, but the deep emotions that many of us are feeling here today of the loss of Pakasami. I'd like to invite Ian Omayane for our fourth reading of the day, please, thank you. John 16, verses 20 to 24. Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Ian, for reading that beautiful scripture that ends with your joy will be complete. And we're going to hear a little bit more later on about the joy of the Lord that Sami seemed to bring to everyone around him. Would you please stand and let's sing our next hymn, All to Jesus, I Surrender.
Green and Jacob, please do take your seats. I surrender all. What can those words mean? I'm so grateful for the hymns that were chosen by the family and what has been sung today so heartfelt and how beautiful just before speaking that we can consider a surrender to Jesus Christ for our lives. What can I say about Papa Sam? Some of the scriptures that were read today gave glimpses also of who he was. Do not let your hearts be troubled from John chapter 4 verse 1. It was beautifully read earlier on. And Papa Sammy is described as a man who was peaceable. Even in sorting out negative situations, he never put anyone down, seeking peace in each situation. His heart was not one to be known as troubled. So what an apt scripture to have begun with today. His heart was not troubled. He would of course have had life situations to deal with. He would of course, as any human, had times of sadness and disappointment, but his heart remained strong. He always allowed people to feel comfortable, to feel good, in each circumstance and situation, his heart was not troubled. And I saw, as I looked at his life story, roots and seeds of God's attributes. They were clearly sown early in Papa Sammy's life. He had a Methodist education from early childhood and that saw to the roots that lay beneath who he was, who he is, who he became from childhood into a man. There were roots there, there were seeds of the things that I'm going to say about him today. There was a foundation upon which he lived, whether he was conscious of it or not. Can we spot these attributes, peace? Can we spot the attributes of God as we consider the things said about him so far? An attribute of God is peace, isn't it? And he was a man of peace. So many times as it was spoken, the Papa Sammy was the life of the party, displaying his love of life, but ensuring that all were included. Well, our Lord Jesus was one who came to give life. Papa Sammy lived it to the full. I heard, and it said about him that he was a good organizer, an entertainer. Papa Sammy always had the desire to bring joy into people's lives. There's an attribute of our Lord. Someone described him as an inspirational family leader. And his life was a living example of the following words that I have read and that I have heard. Known for his kindness, generosity to anyone. No one was left out who came in his pathway. A strong pillar, he's described as. To his army of friends. So everyone he met became a friend. Many lifelong friends. He embraced people, he embraced life. A strong pillar to his family. A joy bringer. Is that not an attribute of God? He was also described as gentle. Full of love and care for all who came across his path. Strength in leadership. A man of peace, as I've said. A life shaper for his children and for others. Integral. Are we spotting the attributes of God as I'm speaking? An open-hearted person, a hero, and his actions always spoke louder than his words. And then there is family. 
important and everything to him. Family meant everything to him. The Lord Jesus Christ invites us to be part of his family, here again, an attribute of God that was evident in Papa Sunday's life. I personally picked up something else that hadn't been mentioned. I saw him as a faithful man. 20 years in one job. I'm not saying that it was the beer that was the attraction. But 20 years, staying somewhere with longevity, showed faithfulness to something. And that to me speaks of a man who, like Christ, was faithful to his family, faithful to his friends, faithful to all who came into his life, faithful in the things that he did. There was faith there. His strength was seen as described in Psalm 91 verses 5 and 6 that were read earlier on. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. And Papa Sammy did not seem to be in fear of illness nor death. He seemed to be the person who even in his own suffering did not desire anyone to partake of that. His words remained strong, faithful, outward. How are you doing? I'm concerned for you. So he thought less of himself and there was strength and not fear even towards the end of his life. He remained strong in his attitude. He remained strong in his speech, showing his continual care for others. Is that not godlike? So he lived a full and beautiful life, blessing so many people. We thank God for this. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, which was read earlier on, this speaks of the fact that we should not be uninformed about those who sleep in death in Christ. We are told that we who are alive at the coming of the Lord will not proceed before those who are sleeping. 67 years old seems such a short time to be on the earth. But who can say that Papa Sammy did not live every second of those 67 years to the fullest. Why did God want him now for himself? We cannot tell, but we do have to be grateful for everything that he was on the earth, for everything that he gave, even though there is deep sadness, 67 years of giving, of loving, of shaping, of forming, of partying and laughing and enjoyment. Perhaps the legacy that he leaves is live life to the full. Embrace every second of it. Love each other. Always see the other person and give, just like the Lord Jesus Christ does. So he's sleeping, as Thessalonians describes. He is asleep. A man who made a commitment to Jesus Christ, he is asleep. And I think it's so fitting that that scripture said, the dead in Christ will rise first at the second coming of Jesus Christ. Sammy put everyone first in his life. Isn't it apt that if Christ would come now in our time, that Sammy would rise first? before we were caught up in the air. Well deserved is the sleep that he now enjoys. I think that we should think about this life that he had 
and a time where that commitment to Jesus Christ also came into his life. Everything about him described was good. Nobody is perfect, we know he wasn't perfect, but he was good. Every description is about his goodness, his kindness. And as I said, there was this foundation of God from a youth right the way through his life. So if it's true that we who are alive are to be caught up, or if we pass on and we fall asleep, like Papa Samuel now is, and we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour, then we're in the same category as Papa Samuel, who is, has died in Christ and will rise again. Eternity, eternal life is his. He is just asleep. Yes, he's departed from us on earth, but he has eternal life. What about us here today? Jesus Christ sacrificed his life by coming in the form of a human being. He came to pay a price for all of our sins. All of us who at one time have been and may be now separated from God because of sin. What is sin? It is simply living our lives separate from the will and the purpose of God. But Sammy knew that a commitment to Jesus Christ was important. That godliness, kindness, giving, bringing joy to people was important in the earth. Perhaps somebody here cannot say that they know for sure that they're not separated from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Perhaps somebody here can say that they know for sure that they wouldn't right now be in the same place where Papa Sammy is laying asleep. The sacrifice on the cross that Jesus Christ bought, paid for us and bought us forgiveness and apportioned if we wanted eternal life, if we believe and accept. Today, if you're touched by anything that has been said and you want to make that commitment to Christ Jesus, if the family permits, I would like to say some words that you may repeat and look forward to an eternal life where if you leave the earth, you will simply be asleep to rise again. So if any of you want to, then please say these words, Lord Jesus Christ. I ask you to forgive me for my sins. Forgive me that I have lived a life separate from you. I repent of my sins and I ask you to come into my heart and to be the Lord of my life from this day forth in your precious name. Amen. I would encourage you that if you've prayed that prayer for the first time as the proceedings go on today speak to somebody that you may know is a Christian, is in the Lord, perhaps a family member or other ministers who may be here during the course of the rest of today and make your faith and your journey with Christ begin. Because now, if you have prayed that prayer, you will fall asleep as well and rise again like Papa Sammy at Jesus' is coming, the dead in Christ will rise and live again. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for your time. I'd like to invite Jill Marie to come and bring us a beautiful solo. Haven't they been amazing today, Jacob and Jill Marie, with their tributes and their contribution in music to Papa Sammy's life? Thank you.
to bring your deep comfort, to bring your strength to them, especially in the days to come. The proceedings are over, he's laid to rest, the crowd stop coming to the house, the friends get on with their lives and some will feel so alone. I pray that you would strengthen and comfort and be present with each who grieves and each who is hurting. I pray that their hearts would not be troubled and that the process of grief would not extend beyond that which it should. But as the grief subsides, let memories begin to flood in that will never leave them. Memories of the past, the joys, the laughter, the funny things, the kindnesses, the learning, the legacy. A portion to each. A gentle entrance into memories and an ebbing away of grief. A portion to each. Instill in each heart. A Papa Sammy would want them to continue to live a full and a joyful life. Your joy, Lord, becomes their strength, I pray, in your precious name. Amen and amen. We're now going to have a time where the coffin will be opened if the funeral directors could come forward. And for those of you who would like to view Papa Sammy, I believe that there are stewards here who will direct you once this is opened. Thank you, John. So, Jacob, you're going to play during this time. So, we'll have some beautiful music being played. And then, when you're ready and all is set, thank you, sir. Please come at your own time and pay your final respects.
so much for paying your respects to the family of Papa Sammy Papa. Some of you may want to join the family as we intern Papa Sammy. And the internment will be held at Mortlake Cemetery, SW147D. And that will take place at 1 p.m. So the cortege will take a few moments and get ready to leave um, by midday today. Father, one more time, I thank you for your strength to this family. Strengthen them, Lord. Strengthen them, Lord. Strengthen them, Lord, for the days ahead. We thank you for what we have heard today and how we have celebrated the life of Papa Sami. Now I pray, may the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. And may the love of God go with us this day and forever. Amen and Amen. As the casket will now leave the church, we will stand and sing our final hymn, Amazing Grace.
Me name baby be a woman. Saint Paul's the only one in church. The only one who looks for money. Since me name baby be a woman, I don't know. Excuse me. Sister, me name a friend of mine. Mighty God, unto your hands do we commit him. Father Lord, we pray, Lord, that it will be well with the family. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We prepare for the family. We give you praise. We give you worship. Lord, we thank you. You are worthy. Worthy of our praises. Come on. 
Yeah. That is Kagbe and Mekami. I think they're in you though. Because I think it was just the three of them. Come on, bro. We were going to let it cut off. We need to put in the. Sit so down and give it to you. What happened here? Gentlemen, uh, we are now going to head to the cemetery very soon, so stay tuned. In case uh, the live stream goes off at any time, please just go to Jufo TV2. This is that's the channel that you are watching this for to see whether there is a part two to continue. After the burial, we will end there, and then once we get to the reception, we start. Uh, we use the link for the reception.
What do you think? What did you say? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay.
Second road, yeah. No, I need to take my things. Um.
endurance that are ours in Jesus was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet which said write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Theatira, Sardis, Philadelphia and Laodicea. I turned round to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash round his chest. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze, glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades.
as it has pleased Almighty God in his great mercy to take to himself the soul of our dear Sammy Papa here departed. We therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our earthly body, that it might be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty working, whereby he is able to subdue all things to himself. Amen. If anybody else would like to...
Where do you go? Go to I'm going to ask Reverend Patrick to breathe a word of prayer before we sing our final song. Thank you. Shall we pray? Eternal Father, we want to bless you and thank you for your goodness. We thank you that at a time appointed, you have called our brother, our father, our, our, our husband, uncle, into your beloved and into your bosom. We thank you for giving him decades to live on earth. Thank you for the lives he affected. Thank you for the many influences, my God, and the ways he made even for others to follow. We declare in the name of Jesus, let your hand be upon the family, upon the loved ones, upon them that are grieving. Yes. Give them, my God, this sense of, of, of peace. Let them have peace in the name of Jesus, that in the midst of all, they will know that he is at a better place, free from everything. Thank you and we bless you and we declare that the life after here shall be a life of purpose. May your name be praised and magnified in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Shall we sing our final hymn? We have a lot of competition today, don't we? <laughs> God be with me until we meet again. I hope somebody knows it better than I do. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels guide our hold you. With his sheep in love and fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we 
to join them afterwards and the details have already been sent haven't they to, to, to so let me close us in prayer and then we'll give the family some time and be instructed about filling the grave as well let not your hearts be troubled has been such a poignant verse for today I pray again for every troubled heart, every grieving heart, that Lord, you will heal, you will strengthen, you will comfort. As Sammy Papo is laid to rest, we know that he already has eternal life. We thank you for his incredible life on earth. We thank you for his giving, for his love. May his memory and his legacy never depart from the lives of his loved ones. But bind them together, Lord, with the thoughts of his giving and the thoughts of his love and bind them together to desire the same that he desired, which is to live a full and enjoyable life. Let each be a testimony to his part in their lives as we close this interment. In your precious name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. God bless you all. Well, we clear this and then everyone can...
Maybe you can switch them around. Side. Go, go, go. Keep going. Keep going. Cover that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 